And one of the things I accepted after this course was uh, Russell's, what I call Russell's rule, which is better not to believe in things for which there is no evidence. As I believe that very firmly. But as you can see, that's an ought statement. It's an article, in, in that sense, it's an article of faith. Now, I could, I could tell you why I believe that, <coughs> why I think it's a better way to move through the world than a lot of others, but I can't prove it to you. It's, a, it's an ought statement. <coughs> and uh, here's another one from Wittgenstein, <coughs> who famously said of that which we cannot speak, it is best to remain silent. Uh, I haven't seen uh, uh, a lot of evidence uh, uh, of adherence to that in, uh, uh, in the world. But uh, I try, and I, I, I don't always live by it myself, but I try. So here's what Darwin said in The Descent of Man about religion. He, sa uh, he said that uh, it was something consisting, highly complicated, consisting of love, complete submission to an exalted and mysterious superior, a strong sense of dependence, fear, reverence, gratitude, hope for the future, and perhaps other elements. Very complicated thing, and it actually, the, the other elements category is probably bigger than, than <coughs> the, the rest of the paragraph. And Darwin wrote to uh, Asa Gray <coughs> in 1860, uh, I feel most strongly that the whole subject is too profound for the human intellect. The dog might as well speculate on the mind of Newton. Uh, and um, this was a letter, <coughs> uh, a letter to a, a reverend, and, and Darwin did have the habit of being polite to, to folks like that. It's also a letter uh, in which he, uh, he points out that, um, uh, the, the, that the habit of economics uh, in in eating caterpillars, live caterpillars from the inside out did not seem to, to be evidence of a beneficent creator. Uh, but uh, uh, he did uh, refuse to, um, to get involved in, in the uh, conversations about this. So one of the things I did after Roger invited me to speak here was um, I bought a stack of books, <coughs> uh, uh, recent books about uh, religion, and uh, I uh, these these three books are um, are, are briefs in favor of of belief in God. They uh, uh, either repeat old arguments about why God exists uh, or describe um, personal experiences, like the one that I uh, didn't have this morning. Uh, and uh, and they're, com they're 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 nice books in a way, but they're completely unconvincing. To to me. Uh, Polkinghorne, by the way, has very, a very interesting uh, gambit, which is, seems new. Uh, he takes the god of the gaps idea, <coughs> which has come up, and, uh, and points out that, that now there are two un unfillable, unclosable gaps, uh, and <coughs> one being uh, quantum indeterminacy because of empirical impossibility, and, and the other being formal chaos because of uh, technical impossibility of closing the gaps. And he sees God in those unclosed gaps. And what I see there is uh, unclosed gaps and unclose unclosable gaps. I re agree with that part. <coughs> so here are some books. Uh, uh, the, t the top two, as you know well, are, are on the other side. Uh, I, I think uh, these two uh, books are very similar to the ones in the last slide in that they are briefs for a particular point of view. Um, <coughs> and, uh, uh, and that's, that's fine. Uh, they are, they are uh, impertinent and, and impolite, which is great. Uh, but actually, they're also intemperate. And that's not so good because it kind of makes you less logical. Um, f for example, let's say you had a hypothesis that uh, that religion has done much more harm than good in the world. How would you go about testing that? Well, you would, you would want to jeopardize it, or at least you would want to, to marshal the evidence of, of the harm and then marshal the evidence of the good. But these two books only marshal the evidence of the, of the harm. I'll give you an analogy, which is a bad analogy, but, but suppose I, I, I really... I uh, really want to make money on a book. I write a book uh, about water, with a chapter on tsunamis, a chapter on hurricanes, a, a chapter on the fact that, that almost all the water in the world is salty and poisonous to humans, and then said water, water's a bad thing. Well, uh, that's the method. This is, not, this is not a good analogy, but that's the method that's taken uh, in these two books. Uh, Sam's book is also, <coughs> and you can, read, you can read the review by 
of Richard's book by Terry Eagleton, which I uh, will tell you more about why I think what I think about it. Uh, S Sam's book is in what I would call the, the chicken little uh, genre of, of uh, attacks on religion. We're going to, uh, uh, to face the worst uh, consequences in the history of the world. How, how anybody, uh, uh, if we don't get rid of religion, how anybody could, could look at the 20th century, where, by the way, um, only, a, only a fraction of the scores of millions of, of violent deaths are attributable to, to religion. Um, I, 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 I don't know, but uh, and, and say that the that 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 the worst is uh, is going to come from religion. I, I think it shows a a, a failure to take a balanced uh, view of of what has happened in history, uh, and, and a lack of interest, as as uh, as Jim pointed out in in evidence, <coughs> and in really. I, I'm now. I'm not saying that the conclusions that, that and in really. I, I'm now, I'm not saying that the conclusions that, that are drawn in these two books would not be confirmed by, by appropriate uh, scientific methods. I'm just saying that, uh, that they weren't taken and that, uh, <coughs> um, that for them to be uh, the, in the vanguard of the scientific approach to, to uh, t talking with religious people in the world, uh, it's about as, as, as far away from the right approach uh, as you can get, in my opinion. Dan Dennett <coughs> also has a lot of snide uh, uh, remarks to make about religion, but, but uh, he is actually interested in, in, in evidence. He, doesn't, he, he talks about the different categories of evidence for, for, the, uh, uh, for, for, for the way religion works and the, and the harm and good it does, um, <coughs> but he doesn't... Um, uh, he doesn't uh, uh, refrain from bashing religion too, which, which is okay. But, but uh, by the way, if you haven't read his wonderful letter that's on, on the table outside, he wrote uh, a letter uh, from what, what, what could easily have been his deathbed to all of us, basically, <coughs> uh, uh, about the experiences he had. And uh, there are no surprises, but it's a very <laughs> eloquent and, and, and good thing. I, ur I urge you to read it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, Steve Gould's book, Rocks of Ages, uh, is something that um, I, I can't endorse either. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why a little later. Uh, so after reading these, uh, uh, these polemics, by the way, I have, I have, after, after saying negative things about Joan's uh, book, I have to say that it's gracefully written and that she is a paragon of courage for coming into this den of vipers and, and uh, trying to keep present a religious viewpoint. Uh, so I went to my own bookshelf and found these uh, and dusted them off and, uh, and read them. And I cannot tell you uh, what a relief it was to, to read calm, reasoned uh, argument about complex subjects that, that truly uh, address the issues in a balanced way. And by the way, come to the conclusion that, you know, either either two or four in my list of positions on God is, is, is right. Uh, <clears throat> and I suggest that, that, that as, for, as for convincing people that, that, uh, that their religious convictions, the people who are on the borderline or the people who are susceptible to being convinced, uh, if you want to convince them um, what, why they uh, shouldn't believe, I would recommend these books <coughs> uh, first. So. If this book works, this is a quotation from The God Delusion, as I intend, religious readers who open it will be atheists when they put it down. And, what and this is the next line, what presumptuous optimism, of course, died in the wool faith heads are immune to argument, of course, uh, immune. Uh, and uh, that's why I, uh, uh, I succumbed to the arguments of my philosophy professor, I suppose. It's, died in the wolf faith as are immune to argument, but at any rate, um, and this is from the end of faith, the Sam's book, the days of our religious identities are clearly numbered. So delusion as defined by <laughs> a false belief based on incorrect inference about external reality that is firmly sustained despite what almost everybody else believes. So that, that is a certainly one part of delusion, and Rick, to be fair, Richard says this is not the definition of delusion that he wants to use. He wants to use the, the dictionary def the definition uh, 
uh, of delusion, um, which is a false belief or impression. And, uh, you know, by that definition, we've all had at least six delusions before breakfast today. <laughs> uh, but it, it does, and, and Sam and, and Richard's books don't meet the next criterion um, because there is no incontrovertible and obvious proof or reverence to the, to, uh, t to support the existence of God. But uh, you notice that, that psychiatrists have explicitly said uh, that uh, articles of religious faith don't count. Now, <clears throat> look, look at these two statements and uh, ask yourself, you know, which, is, which more closely fulfills the, the, the definition, the technical definition of delusion. Uh, and it's clearly these statements and not uh, the statement, I believe in God. I'm not going to go into detail about this. This is the standard <coughs> uh, uh, arguments against belief. <coughs> they are numerous. They are convincing. Every one, one of them is, is, is endorsed by me uh, as I stand here. Um, and, uh, and I think there are a lot of interesting, um, uh, there's a lot of interesting things say, to, to, to say about each of them. Uh, then you have uh, the, the explanations for religion that are, that are psychological and psychosocial, and I also thoroughly endorse those. And you have, uh, uh, and so the, the belief in God uh, it, it, it draws on certain psychological uh, needs and yearnings, of, and, and other aspects of religion draw on other aspects. Uh, and furthermore, <coughs> I agree uh, with Richard and, uh, and Sam that all sacred texts are characterized by errors and lies, internal and mutual contradictions, uh, uh, implausible supernatural origins, and silly or cruel behavior of gods and religious heroes. Now, I show you these, this list because I want to tell you <coughs> that if, if, um, if you're having trouble remembering the, the conversations that you had late at night in your college dormitory then you sh you, about these things, then you should uh, by all means go out and do what I did and spend a couple of hundred bucks on, uh, on a stack of books attacking religion because it will refresh your, your memory of those conversations very well, but uh, y you won't find out anything new. <coughs> so taking these objections, we need to recognize that none of them is new. Uh, all have, have been heard or independently thought of by most intelligent people. And most important, none has posed or is likely to pose a serious obstacle to belief in the minds of the vast majority of believers. How can that be? Well, once upon a time, there were major religious leaders who thought they could explain how the physical world works. They also cared a lot about proofs of God's existence. But thanks to Galileo and all, these people have been in retreat for four centuries. But most religious people don't care about proofs. It's not news to them that religion has caused great harm it's, or that sacred texts are flawed or that science explains most things. They have been meeting those objections with aplomb for centuries. Most don't care. <coughs> they will proudly tell you about argument. They don't care about evidence. They don't even care that they can't clearly define God. Most think that all these conversations are silly. So what do they care about? Faith. Defined in letter to the Hebrews as the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. And Sam, uh, Sam's definition is, uh, or, or his, his, uh, one of his basic statements is, religious faith forms a kind of perverse cultural singularity, a vanishing point beyond which rational discourse proves impossible. Yes, that's what it is, Sam. Get over it. <laughs> If you don't understand it, try this. When you present arguments against religion to a person of faith, you might as well tell her to care as much about other people's children as about her own, or urge her to stop her ears, give up music, and learn sign language, or harangue an enophile about the dangers of alcohol and try to enlist his support for a return to prohibition. By the way, my, my water analogy is not fair, but uh, an ethanol analogy is, I think, uh, uh, it's on, it's on the other side. Religion is somewhere between water and ethanol, in my view. Uh, ethanol uh, causes, uh, uh, demonstrably causes great harm. Uh, we also know now that, that, uh, <coughs> that it causes uh, some good. Uh, and uh, that the balance is clearly in favor of, uh, uh, of harm with ethanol. Well, why was prohibition repealed? It, it was not repealed because people had a bad, uh, the wrong idea about that balance. It was repealed because it was discovered 
that the attempt to abolish ethanol and the use of ethanol for consciousness alteration was more costly than the harm done by alcohol. That's the conclusion that was come to. And I, I urge on you the analogy of that with religion. Um, because not only do Sam and Richard's books not take up the balance between the good done by religion and the harm done by religion, they do not even uh, uh, consider the harm that could be done by attempting to abolish religion, which they both advocate strongly. <clears throat> So none of these efforts, which I just mentioned, is in principle impossible. And I say what Jim said, good luck. <laughs>